Got another 559B with delimmer issues. The uh, the bladder's busted. And the way that things work, there's a bladder in there just like a well pressure tank. And where it's connected here uh, to your nitrogen charge, there should be no oil in there. If you got oil on that side of it, that means there's a hole in the bladder and it's pushed the oil onto the wrong side. This side, the inside of the bladder is supposed to be charged with uh, with nitrogen, 350 psi, 325, and then uh, and then you have hydraulic pressure that pushes from in here from the open closed valve, open valve, and it uh, it makes the knives open on the D lever, and it also charges that accumulator back. And so the the accumulator is what operates the knives closed. So when the knives go closed and they go around the tree and it hits a knot, it allows that knot to open and close and also follow the contour of the tree as it gets smaller. If that was on a straight valve, it'd bust something. So when you're dealing with a D-limber, the only thing that's working the knives closed is that uh, accumulator valve. Now, odd thing about uh, you have pressure on both sides of the cylinder. So when the knives are open, then you're holding the pressure about 1200 PSI. And then when you hit the knives close button, then it dumps that pressure. And then at that point, the uh, the pressure that's built in the accumulator behind well, with the nitrogen pushing it, that's what makes the knives go close. All right, I got that valve open. That releases it, the pressure off the accumulator, but you can hear the air going. It's slowly dropping on the gauge. And it's just pushing that air. It's supposed to be in that bladder right back into the hydraulic tank. You can hear it pushing that air all the way back to the hydraulic tank with that relief valve open, or that vent valve rather. We'll have to replace the bladder in that bottle, which is also down inside here, the bottle. I got a bottle and a bladder at the shop, so I'm gonna pack that uh, that bottle and then just bring it back out here and swap the bottles out. All right, I'm going to replace the bag in that accumulator I did the video on in the woods the other day. I got the bag out here. Pretty chilly this morning. Got it sitting in the sun. Maybe it'll uh, make it a little more pliable. If not, I'll have to put it in front of the heater. Uh, first thing we're going to do, I got to push this piece back inside there. It's been sitting out in a little weather. And the, the most critical thing on this deal when you're replacing that bladder is there's no grit inside this bottle. All right, so that bag's made out of rubber and it's pressed hard against the side of this tank. And if you got a piece of sand in there, uh, it's gonna eat through that bladder pretty quick. Uh, that's generally the cause of failure. The first one will last much longer than the second one. A lot of times if you don't clean that tank out before you put the new bladder in there. pressure inside the bladder even though I already took the straighter out so I'm gonna try to ah it's oil uh -huh. All right, now.
Alright guys. I've done a video about this before, it wasn't quite this detailed. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a wire through this bottom, little piece of mechanics wire, and that'll allow me to line up this nipple. So I'm gonna take this wire, strap it right around the end. the cap off the tire of this skid steer right here because it was available keep it from pulling off and we got to stuff the bag back in there without letting it touch the ground that's important Not pulling it with the wire. We don't want it to come off. Have to start over. Taking the slack out of it has to go. Go. this back in here I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but I washed this whole this whole bottle out. Washed it, blew it with air, washed it, blew it with some more air, and then came back with the brake cleaner and did some more with that. And that uh, got pretty clean. I didn't see. Uh, now we're going to charge it. So on this end, you need to make sure that that plugs out or the ends open. Uh, I mean, they just go to the same place, but we don't want any. Uh, the air that would be between the bag and the bottle there to skew our uh, our charge. There we go, about three fifty. All right, I'm back out here on this 559B. I'm going to put the bottle in it this morning and show you some other things. We're probably going to end up pretty much covering the whole system as far as hydraulic goes on a, on a pull-through D-limber CTR CSI. It's basically the same. It's not exactly, but it's pretty damn close. All right, the first thing we got to do is make sure that this vent valve is open, and it is, just like a water spigot to the left is open, uh, where I left it last time. As you can see, that goes directly to the head of this accumulator bottle, and it's basically teed with the pressure line coming in. So under normal operation, this valve's got to be closed. Its purpose is for service work, so you can take these lines off 
without there being pressure in this bottle and blowing oil all over you. Close. All right, so under that floorboard, that's a control valve. It's just a spool valve, electronically controlled, and that sends the oil pressure down this line into a block right here. Like we talked about in the last video, uh, when you open the knives, it pressurizes this bladder, and it also sends pressure to open up the knives. So the, uh, but when you when you shut the knives, all right, so there's pressure on both sides of the cylinder. You open pressure. 1250 close pressure is 300 so what happens is when the knives are open you're holding that pressure and then basically when you close the knives not basically but when you close the knives you dump that pressure off and at that point the pressure it doesn't really matter which gauge you're on the pressure will start to fall and it'll dump that pressure off to 300 pounds and that's where it stops the relief closes when it uh it won't let any more go through over 300 pounds and then that way the whole time the d limber's working there's 300 PSI squeezing that wood. All right, when first time you do it, you're gonna have to hold them knives up because you gotta you gotta charge that bladder back up. So it's still not working properly, but I can hear it blowing over that relief in that uh, spool valve under the trailer I was talking about. All right, when I hold the knives open button I can hear it blowing over that relief in the bottom frame it's just a little whistle there it goes Turning that relief valve in fixed the problem. Uh, what it was doing, because it was blowing over that relief, it wasn't. It was dumping that pressure off that's supposed to build in the open side. It was building the pressure, but then dumping it right back off. So turning that relief valve into that. But this knife here on the front is slower than the other two. The other two are working just perfectly. All right, on this uh, CTR 426, each one of these valves, one, two, three, those are your flow control valves. Uh, they're not pressure valves, they're just flow control valves, so you can individually uh, control the speed of each knife, and that's the one for the front knife. I'm going to back it out, so backing it out should create a better flow. to the next one.